Hi, my name is May Palakpak, creator of Fully Housewife, The Wiser Years. Welcome to my homeschool podcast. In this podcast, my husband Jay and I will be talking about our lifestyle and our journey as a homeschooling family here in the Philippines. We will be talking about what we do and what we do not do and how we raise and educate our three children who happen to be creatives and artists. We will be talking about our wins, our losses, and our mistakes. And we will also be talking to other seasoned homeschooling families to give you a better picture. So other homeschooling families can figure out and customize their homeschool journeys based on all of our experiences. Catch us weekly on Fully Housewife, The Wiser Years Homeschool Podcast. Hi everyone, welcome to our homeschool podcast by Fully Housewife, The Wiser Years. I am me and this is my good friend Janice. I met her in the blogging industry, but we also share a passion for homeschooling. She graduated with a double degree at the De La Salle University in Taft made with two majors, management and communications. She spent half of her career years organizing events for nonprofit organizations while helping out with the family businesses until 2012 or was it in 2012 that you um, yeah. become freelance? Uh, yes, VA. work from home. Yeah, work from home. Mm-hmm. Now she is a podcast manager and outreach strategist. Mm-hmm. She'll explain to you what it means later. And uh, yeah, she's a good friend of mine. Her, one of her sons is my godchild. So, mm-hmm. Hello, Janice. Hello. Hi, everyone. So tell us a little more about yourself and yeah, explain the podcast management work and what you do. Okay, so um, again, like what May said earlier, um, I'm also a homeschool mom. Um, I have four kids, uh, two girls and two boys. The two girls are now 21 and 20 years old, and the boys are 12 and almost 7. Xander's turning 7 next week. I'm homeschooling, but I've only ever homeschooled the two boys because the two girls have been in traditional school since they were in preschool. Um, Regarding my work, as you mentioned earlier, I'm a podcast manager and outreach strategist. So I work with podcasters, mainly women entrepreneurs like yourself. I help them manage their podcasts from pre-production to post-production. And for the outreach part, it simply means I help them find guests for their podcasts or I help um, wannabe guests who may or may not have podcasts mm-hmm. to be a guest on other shows. So that's what it, that's what it means by a, an outreach strategist. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk about what you said, that you only started homeschooling with your two younger boys. So yeah. what, what made you decide to homeschool them when two of your children were not homeschooled? Uh, okay, so I'll start it by giving you a background of when my eldest two were still kids. So I got married early, in my early 20s. Back then, the only educational path or method that I knew about was the traditional method because that's how I grew up. Um, I was educated in traditional schools and I didn't know anybody who was homeschooling. I didn't even know what homeschooling is or if there was such a thing. So of course, when I had my two kids, I sent them to school okay. when they were in preschool. But um, after a few years, I think when they're around six and five, uh, their dad and I separated. Mm-hmm. And then, um, but we were still co-parenting. The kids still lived with me. Eventually, I met my current partner, John, who's the dad of my two boys. So, yon, eventually, in 2010, I got pregnant with our first son, Ziggy. Mm-hmm. So, I was working full-time. And then, I was put on bed rest because mm-hmm. it was a delicate pregnancy. So I suddenly found myself with a lot of time to do whatever. <laughs> so I went online and discovered these uh, mom blogs from the U.S. And because of those blogs, I learned about homeschooling. So at first, I thought maybe it's not uh, an option here in the Philippines. But then I was blog hopping during those days. It was still a thing, blog hopping, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. So yeah, and then I discovered that there were also a lot of uh, Filipina mom blogs. Mm. And through those blogs, I discovered that homeschooling also exists here in the country. 
Mm-hmm. So I got really curious. I was still pregnant with Ziggy back then. So I started reading all these blogs, doing my research. And then I realized, oh, maybe this is something we can do for him. Mm-hmm. So I discussed it with John, not knowing what his reaction was going to be. But surprisingly, mm-hmm. he was very, you know, his uh, reaction was very positive. Mm-hmm. And so we decided that uh, this is the path we're going to try for him. Mm-hmm. Maybe for the first few years while mm-hmm. he was still in preschool. But um, I also wanted to homeschool the girls Mm-hmm. However, during that time, they were already at the latter part of their grade school years. Ah, okay. And then I had a previous agreement with their dad that mm-hmm. when after they graduate from grade school, they need moving back with him. Ah, okay. So I only had like two years left uh, with them mm-hmm. here at our home. So there was no point in homeschooling them anymore because mm-hmm. I also knew they wouldn't be able to continue doing that in their dad's house anyway. So mm-hmm. I never really got to homeschool them. Mm-hmm. What is your homeschool setup? Has it always been the way it is? Because I know you're now reading about outdoors homeschooling. Is that how you call it? But forest more schooling. Out, forest That's schooling, it. yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, but I also know that you used to do or are still doing unit studies. Mm-hmm. So what is your current homeschool setup? Okay, currently, we're actually really mostly eclectic because mm-hmm. I like to pull from different uh, educational philosophies. But we rely a lot on unit studies because mm-hmm. I just... um love that through unit studies I'm able to really cater to what my kids are interested in Mm -hmm. but we didn't start out that way Mm -hmm. um in the beginning when Ziggy was still in preschool we I didn't follow any philosophy actually I was still in the research phase Mm -hmm. we were just doing our own thing reading aloud playing games stuff like that and then when he turned five that's when we started thinking oh maybe you should enroll him already in a homeschool provider. Because mm-hmm. it was around that time that the K-12 um, thing first started here in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so we decided to enroll him in a local homeschool provider. We stayed with them for the first four years. So from mm-hmm. kinder up to grade two or grade three. Like a bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, And then... After that, we decided to go in B. Mm. So we're in B until now. Although we are um enrolled in a foreign kind of umbrella school, HLA Home Life Academy. And, uh, like us. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so then, my question is, yeah. uh, okay, continue. Yeah, you were just mentioning something about forest schooling, Kanina. Yeah, um, it's just something I learned about the past two years Mm -hmm. because there was this book that I read it's called The Call of the Wild and Free by Ainsley Arment yeah so I got really inspired uh, by it there's a really big community in the US and actually all around the world as well called the Wild and Free community Mm -hmm. and they really promote um, learning organically Mm -hmm. being out in nature um um educating the kids through nature so i felt a call to do the same for my kids mm-hmm. but i didn't feel equipped because i wasn't really like a nature girl <laughs> before so that's what i'm doing now i enrolled in a group coaching program okay. um called braving the outdoors mm-hmm. um and i started only uh, three weeks ago I think so mm-hmm. I'm still learning about it what is it like with um the group coaching uh there are modules that mm-hmm. are given to us like every week mm-hmm. and then every so often every other week there are coaching calls with the other parents and educators who are enrolled in the program so basically mm-hmm. we discuss uh what the lesson was about what okay. our learnings were what our struggles mm-hmm. are is there application right away or? 
um, to finish it first. You can apply because actually the first module was just about learning to shed our beliefs ah, about okay. education. Yes. Because yes. that's what we discussed. So mm -hmm. because a lot of us, what we know about education is just the traditional method. Yes. And forest schooling is so different from that. So the first module is just about shedding those beliefs. Mm -hmm. So there. We're at that point right now. I think no man. Yeah. I thought you started already because you were taking the boys uh on hikes and campings. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard to go kasi, to the camping sites when you don't have a car. I mean, exactly. at least right now. But we're looking for venues mm. like that. Maybe if you yeah. find one that would be accessible to bus hoppers, mm. let us know. Cool. Um, yeah. You know, for our audience here, Janice is a voracious reader. <laughs> reads a lot. And there were times when I would be not just tempted, but I would actually see her post her books and I would go searching for them and buy them. So they're all in my Kindle right now, half read. <laughs> like I'm not as fast a reader as she is and not as patient, but I do plan to go there and start reading them. Uh, in a way, she influences a lot of my thinking in terms of, you know, how do you go about with life? The practical things like, you know, saying no. And I think uh -huh. that it's a great thing to be equipped with because you can pass it on to your children so that they will not be burned out by life and by the unnecessary pressures of the world. So how are your little kids taking homeschool? Are they enjoying it? Or are they asking you about why are they going to school? Do they have those? No. <laughs> Actually, they, they have no desire to go to school at all. <laughs> I've already asked them several times. Just mm -hmm. like as a joke, because I know what their answer is going to be. But they've mm -hmm. always told me they never want to go to school. Okay. Which is funny because we never really started homeschooling thinking that we'll be doing it until the end of high school. We just um, wanted to take it one year at a time because we didn't know if it's going to be effective for us. Yeah. But as it turns out, maybe they are having fun. And I can see that they are learning. They're thriving. Mm -hmm. So now we know that we'll be um continuing homeschooling until they graduate from high school. So now I want to move on to Zia because this is the one topic that I'm really, really interested to know about. Mm -hmm. Zia went to traditional school all the way until fourth year high school. Yes. And then she surprised everyone. Did she surprise everyone that oh, yeah. she decided that she's not going to go and pursue the university route and will mm -hmm. go the alternative path. Mm -hmm. So tell us the story behind that. Okay, I think it started when she was in fourth year high school. Mm -hmm. Um, That was in 2020. So mm -hmm. that was during the first year of COVID. Mm -hmm. So what happened then was, I told you earlier she was living with her dad, right? But during mm -hmm. COVID, the last, I think that, uh, COVID started around May, May right? Uh, March. The lockdown started in March. Yeah, yeah, March. Yeah, that's when she decided to move back in with us. Ah, okay. So she spent the last few months of her third year high school with us. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, she she stayed here na. So during her fourth year, she was doing online school because everybody was doing online school. Mm -hmm. when you're in a senior here that's when you start applying for college right yeah, so yeah. she was doing the same thing as her classmates and I would help her uh, decide where she wants to apply which courses and I noticed that she wasn't exactly sure about what she wanted mm -hmm. we would just look at these list of courses and yeah. then she'd choose one based on the nearest to her interests. Mm -hmm. But the problem is she had a lot of interests mm -hmm. but didn't know which one she wanted to focus mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So we still continued with the uh, applications. 
And out of the four universities that she applied to, she, she got accepted to three. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting that she might mm -hmm. choose one of those. Mm -hmm. But during that time, I could see how stressed she was mm -hmm. because she really wasn't sure where she wanted to go and she really mm -hmm. wasn't sure what she wanted to take. So we just had this conversation one day and asked her, and I told her, you know, you don't need to decide now. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go to college right after high school if mm -hmm. you don't think you're ready. So yeah. I think she was surprised by that because mm -hmm. she grew up believing that that's what yes. everyone does, right? Yes, yes. After you graduate from high school, you go straight to college. Mm -hmm. So I guess when John and I actually talked to her about it and gave her that option, I think she was surprised. Mm -hmm. But it opened up her mind to all mm -hmm. the other possibilities as well. Yeah. So um during I think it was the last two months mm -hmm. um before high school graduation mm -hmm. when she decided because you were supposed to already tell the university of your choice if you're going mm -hmm. to pursue, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So there was a deadline already, and I could see she was super stressed. Eventually, she just decided she didn't want to do that route. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, were there other people who found it a little strange or a bit different? Yeah. Um. Actually, we were expecting that already mm -hmm. because um her dad or mm -hmm. his side of the family also is very traditional. Mm -hmm. I don't think they were expecting Z at all to make that decision. Actually, even after she already, she had a very, very hard time mm -hmm. even telling them mm -hmm. about her decision. I think it took her weeks or more than a month mm -hmm. before she told them. Because they were asking already, so where are you going to college? Mm -hmm. What course are you taking? And she found it hard to tell mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. side of the family because college is a big thing for them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're very traditional minded. But now I think they've ac already accepted her decision. Mm -hmm. But I think they still hope that eventually she will yeah, go to college. college. Yeah. So this is not really as, you know, we, we shouldn't get too much uh, resistance on the idea, which is good, I think. What did she do? So she decided not to go to college and she decided to take the alternative route. And I know she made plans to take some programs. Mm -hmm. So what did she first do? What was the first step? Uh, the first step was we really researched for different opportunities. Mm -hmm. And it was perfect timing when Abot Tala, yeah. which is a self-directed learning center, mm -hmm. first came out with their launch pad. Yeah. program mm -hmm. because Abatala initially was really supposed to be for high school yeah. uh, on schoolers or homeschoolers but then they launched um, the launch pad uh, program which was for teens who didn't want to go to college yeah. or young adults and it's supposed to help them uh, figure out which path to take mentor them and stuff like that so she did that for a year and a half Mm -hmm. And she actually finished the program already and graduated from that program in February of this okay. year. Okay. So what was the program about? Because I know Abu Tala focuses on the interest. So what particular interest of Zia did she zero in when she was in Abu Tala? Uh, she took several courses actually mm -hmm. and i can't recall all of them but there were some on entrepreneurship ah yeah that's right communications i think and then their relationships yeah and then they were able to give her an opportunity that's the mm -hmm. one of the great things actually about abotala because they don't only have classes they have mentoring yeah so the mentoring was really something she loved Mm -hmm. Um, I think it helped her a lot mm -hmm. Um, really hone in on the path she wanted to take mm -hmm. and then they gave her an opportunity to go into an internship yeah. program so mm -hmm. she was able to work for a small uh, studio yeah. okay 
So she uh, worked with them to make uh, to create social media graphics, ah, videos, nice. and then she was able to help with a uh, an album launch. Mm, so, yeah, yeah, I know yeah. about. That. Yeah, yeah. So she helped prepare for the event, and she was there for the event itself, helping mm. organize and stuff like that. So how did she find it? Ah, I think it played a really big role, um, in this journey of hers, mm -hmm. because at first she was not sure about Abotala because she has never experienced anything like that. Okay. And when she first started, everything mm. was still online. So the classes mm. were online. There weren't any face-to-face -face, mm. uh, meetups yet because it was COVID. Yeah, yeah. But then after a few months of her being there, they started reintroducing face-to-face -face yeah. meetups. Mm -hmm. And then that's when she started making friends mm. there. And then uh, what surprised us was that she made friends with kids, teens, who are really younger than her. Like mm -hmm. She was already 18, 19, and mm -hmm. then her close friends were like 14, 15 year olds mm -hmm. who really looked up to her mm -hmm. and treated like her like an older sister. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that was really good for her because yeah. she grew up kind of like a shadow lang to her older sister. Mm -hmm. eh. Okay, okay. Because the age gap between my oldest daughter Zoe and ZS just a year 14 months ah okay so all her life I just I uh, know when I when I study them it's always like she's just following on I uh, know Zoe's footsteps mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and wasn't really trying to be different from her but when she transferred back to us mm -hmm. she started getting more independent and then when she got to Abotala, that's really where she finally got the experience of being the mentor naman, mm -hmm. the ate to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yun. You know, it's interesting when you say that, you know, she became very close, which surprised you, to mm -hmm. younger people. Because that's one of the principles behind homeschooling, right? That mm -hmm. you can create relationships with people who are older or yeah. younger or whatever mm -hmm. status or position in life. Mm -hmm. It's it's a more freeing concept, supposedly, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the mentorship really made a big difference. Because she was mentored by Oe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, Oe sort of became like a friend to her. Because mm -hmm. she would help Zia, not only on like career stuff. Mm -hmm. But also um, with whatever personal thing she's going through yeah. during that time. So yeah. I think that was a huge... I, and I think she never got that kind of relationship with any of her past teachers in uh -huh. traditional yes, school. So, yeah, because it's not common. Yeah. yeah. For those who do not know, Awi is the executive director of Abotala and Abotala mm -hmm. Launchpad. And um, she is also uh, a self-directed homeschooling mom. She has mm -hmm. two kids. And before all this, and she's also one of the founders, right? And before all yeah. these, she was, um, was it like a radio mm -hmm. host? She, she's a talent. She And mm -hmm. um, she also teaches public speaking yes. until now, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Communications is one of her Forte. four things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she also writes, she has a blog too. Were you at all worried during the time that she, you know, she first went to Abutala mm -hmm. and then she's considering this and then you're watching her? Was there ever a time, especially during the pandemic, because yeah. you said it was just all online, when you started to worry or get, get anxious if you have chosen the right path for, for her? Yeah, I think it's normal to have some worries. Especially mm -hmm. if you're doing something new. Because this uh -huh. is not only something new for her. Mm -hmm. It's something new for us. Yeah. We've right. never enrolled any of our other kids into a program like this. Yeah. But the worry started to dissipate when we started seeing how much she enjoyed being there. Because mm -hmm. they would have um like face-to-face -face meetups like the, the SDL sessions every few weeks. And she yeah. would always be very excited mm -hmm. to attend. And I could see that she 
was learning something. She was thriving mm-hmm. there. And um, based on all of the stuff she's been telling us, she was suddenly getting some sort of direction for what she wanted to do in her life. So one of the things actually was um, her hobby, her crochet hobby, which mm-hmm. has, is yes, now yes. a small business. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is she selling it online? Um, not officially because actually it just started a few months ago and mm-hmm. she sort of launched it only two months ago during Abotala's Limitless event. Ah, yes. I saw the pictures. They were like, wow, they're fantastic. I don't, Yeah, I can't even do the little thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think I tried to do it before, but then I forgot. Mm-hmm. But to make flowers sunflowers right yeah different kinds of flowers yeah. she's actually making a doll for me like right now which mm-hmm. i will give um as a gift to my friend so she started that business already during that fair and she almost sold out on that day mm-hmm. so and she even got pre-orders and um it continued up mm-hmm. until the day so it's been two months and she's still getting orders Mm-hmm. And that's what she's busy with right now. So aside from the business, she said that she's also, you told me that she's also helping you out with the with your business. What does mm-hmm. she do now? Ah, since we're doing podcast management, part of that is editing the yeah. post show. So it's either an audio edit or an audio and video edit. So it's John who's actually doing that part for me, the mm-hmm. audio and video editing. Mm-hmm. But because Zia's other interests revolve around media, so she's mm-hmm. interested in graphic design, she's mm-hmm. interested in photography, videography. Mm-hmm. So we gave her an idea. What about what if you try editing? Mm-hmm. So she said yes because one of the things she also did aside from Abatala was take mm-hmm. courses from PCCI, mm-hmm. the Philippine Center for Creative Imaging. So she's really interested in media. So we said, okay, why don't you try editing and see if you mm-hmm. like it? It's also another way for you to earn money. Mm-hmm. So she did. So and I, I think she's been editing for us for a year mm-hmm. now. So she's earning regularly from that. She's on your payroll right yes. now. Uh-huh. And and your clients know that she's part of the team, right? Yes. She's do. actually part of the little company that you have officially. Uh-huh. Wow. So how is she finding the the work? Ah, she's learned a lot over the past year. But I don't know if it's something she will continue doing because like I said, she's busy yeah. with the crochet business. Yeah. And yeah. it's handmade. Eh? It's, oh, she's the oh. only one doing the product, yeah. creating the products. Okay. And it takes a lot of time. Yeah. And she's very, she already started an Instagram account. She has all mm-hmm. these plans about other products that she wants mm-hmm. to make. Mm-hmm. So I know that her focus right now is that crochet business. Mm-hmm. So if she decides she doesn't want to edit anymore, mm-hmm. then that's fine. Okay. I'm going to put the link to her Instagram account okay. in the description box later so that you know, for people who want to check out her works mm-hmm. and would want to buy, mm-hmm. you know where to find them, where to choose yeah. and where to message her. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, you said she wanted to take up some courses before. Mm-hmm. Did she pursue that? Did she push through with that? Yeah. Um, She took a photography, a beginner's I... photography class in PCCI. And mm-hmm. there was another one for Adobe, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Photoshop. And then there's another one, but I forgot what it is. Mm-hmm. There's still a lot that she mm-hmm. wants to take there. In fact, we just got her a camera because she said she wants to learn more about photography. But I don't know when she's going to continue doing that since she's busy with the crochet business right now. But she has to take photos of her products. Exactly, which she does. Yes. Yeah, she's at least she's getting practice also with those things. Do you uh teach her how to use some of the the apps and the you know the CRMs and stuff that you use for work? Does she learn from you those things too? 
Um, as for the apps, it was John who taught her how to use the editing apps. Yeah. And then the other stuff, like when she makes graphics, mm -hmm. um, social media graphics and reels yeah. and such, I never had to teach her any of them. Ah, that. okay, okay. She learned them all by herself because she wanted to. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, good right idea. now. The only thing I've had her use, I think, was Slack. Yeah. For communications, and then mm -hmm. we also have Google Suite, Google Drive. Mm -hmm. Um, there, but I haven't really taught her much about the project management apps yet because there's no need for it for her mm -hmm. right now. But eventually, if she uh finds a need for it for whatever job she's she finds in the future, then she's gonna have to learn it. Yeah, that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little curious on John's role in all of this because for me, it's hard for me to do this just by myself. Yeah. So I sometimes have to pull Jay to help me out. But what does how active is John with all of these happening with your kids? The homeschooling the young ones and then um, you know, helping along Zia as she pursues her interests. Uh she with Zia, mm -hmm. he played a very big role because I don't think I'd be able to convince her if it wasn't for John mm -hmm. because of his own experience in college. Mm -hmm. Because I graduated with a double degree. Mm -hmm. So I experienced college, right? So yeah. who was I to tell her that you don't need college for this? right but john yeah. he did go to college but he chose not to finish his course mm -hmm. and of course it was this perspective mm -hmm. that helped the realize uh, maybe college is not for me too mm -hmm. because john is john took up um architecture mm -hmm. in college because initially he thought he wanted to be an architect but a few years into the course, he decided it was not what he wanted to do. Yeah. And he feels mm -hmm. some guilt um, with not finishing. Because, of course, his parents already paid for his yeah. tuition and stuff like that. He already spent a few years with it and then suddenly mm -hmm. decided it wasn't for him. He didn't want that same experience for mm -hmm. Zia. Yeah. So he explained why. Mm -hmm. And... So it really opened up her mind because he he told Zia, if you're not sure about this course, mm -hmm. then don't take it. Because mm -hmm. it might just be a waste of your time or a waste of money. Mm -hmm. We'd rather you explore first for mm -hmm. the next few years. And then if you decide that the path you're going to take would require a college degree, mm -hmm. then go ahead then enroll in college. But at least you're already sure by that time, right? Just we also told him, uh, we also told her the the path you are thinking of taking right now doesn't really require a college degree. She wanted to do photography. Mm -hmm. You don't need a college degree to be yeah. a photographer. You need photography skills. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to go to college for that. Yeah. You can just right learn photography mm. in a photography school or have yeah. a mentor do an internship right so we told her if these are your interests mm. then we find other ways for you mm -hmm. to learn mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be college but yeah. college but we didn't tell her don't go to college ever yeah yeah she knows that it can still be an option in the future mm -hmm. if she decides she needs it yeah, I'm so happy because I'm no longer alone. <laughs> because because a lot of people are usually shocked when I say when I say the same things. The uh -huh. because my eldest son is 18, he has no plans to go to college. He does. He is considering going to a to a dance uh, school, mm. a performing arts school actually. But that's the extent of it. No, he doesn't want to go into an academic heavy mm. 
university program. Mm -hmm. So we're good with it, but a lot of people are a little, you know, shocked by it. Yeah. Uh, because it's new to them. But we've heard this, uh, we've heard this philosophy many times before, but not from Filipinos. We actually mm -hmm. heard it from Americans. I remember there was this uh a friend of ours who is a talented uh, singer and songwriter. He's actually very popular now, but I'm not going to say his name. And mm -hmm. I remember he was struggling to finish uh, university because of financial restraint. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the pastor told him, you know, college not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then um, Pop, one of Pablo's mentors, he's also an American, when he was taking... Um, I thought I, I will I will say his name. His name is Adam Sage. He mm -hmm. was uh his name is actually his title is actually Master Adam Sage. He used to be the artistic director for Ballet Philippines, and he mentored Pablo for a short time. And they talked about school. They talked about university, and he told Pablo he just did enough school because he didn't need it for the career that he really wanted to pursue. What would you advise parents who have teenagers considering the alternative route? I guess my first advice would be to really talk to your child. Mm -hmm. Because they, like Zia, she wasn't even aware that there was another option. Mm -hmm. She was going along with uh, everyone else because that's what everyone else was doing. Mm -hmm. So even if it, if it was stressing her out, she mm -hmm. felt they had to do it. And mm -hmm. I never, we never want our kids to do something because napilitan sila. Yes. Because that was their only option. Mm -hmm. So if you already have an inkling that your child probably doesn't want to go to college, mm -hmm. then just have open communication with them. Try to understand why they don't want to go to college. Yeah. And if college is really essential, because mm -hmm. in some careers, it is. Like yes, if you want to be a true. lawyer, an engineer, yeah. a doctor, then of course you need the college degree. Yes. If it's something like <laughs> photography or even graphics design, mm -hmm. you can learn all those skills somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So just be open to alternatives. Um, help them find mm -hmm. those other pathways because I feel like us parents mm -hmm. our job is not to dictate yes. to our children on mm -hmm. we want you to take this path this is the path you're going to take it, that I don't think that's our job our job is mm -hmm. to be a facilitator yes. or a guide so we yes. help them find their path yeah but in the Philippines it's still not um a widely accepted concept so mm. what are your views on that i think the philippines still has a long way to go <laughs> yeah in um trying to accept that um concept because actually in my side of the family they've always been supportive mm -hmm. but they would have questions like so what's she gonna do now mm -hmm. right so what's her career gonna look like mm -hmm just out of curiosity mm -hmm. because they they know me they trust me mm -hmm. um as a parent to my child so mm -hmm. they're not really negative about it mm -hmm. but i know that there are some people out there who might think we're crazy <laughs> but i try not to think about those people anymore i don't really um think about what others are saying yeah. what's important yeah. to me is uh, no, uh, my kids, are they thriving? Are they learning? Mm -hmm. And I see that she is. Mm -hmm. She's learning so much now. Mm -hmm. Um, She's learning about her abilities mm -hmm. right now because she's creating this business. Mm -hmm. She's learning now, oh, in business pala, you, you have to learn these things. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, when she was pricing, I had to mm -hmm. coach her, oh, this is, mm -hmm. these are the things you consider when you're pricing your products. And then there was this, I think a couple of times it happened already. Somebody placed an order mm -hmm. and she forgot to add a rush fee because it was a rush job. Oh, okay. So oh. that's a learning experience. Yes. Right? So she she learned that 
she, she probably needs a system to have a system in place so she doesn't yeah. forget those things. And mm -hmm. then she has plans of like joining bazaars and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But mm -hmm. the problem is there's only one person creating all these products. And when you, <laughs> you join a bazaar, you have to have a lot, right? Yeah. A lot to offer. So now I think she needs to figure out a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And if she decides that she needs a college degree for that, then we'll support her. Mm -hmm. Whatever yeah. she decides. Yeah. But like as far as other people, yeah. they can take whatever they want. <laughs> I like what you said to me uh, in our chat the other day when you mm -hmm. said um, you said you want to you don't want your children to decide on college and then like deny them of that opportunity. You always have mm -hmm. it. You always yeah. keep the option open. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Can you expound more on that? Yeah, but just I think going to college is really a personal decision. Yeah, like I said, kanina. Our job as parents is just to guide. Mm -hmm. So like for our son now, mm -hmm. so Ziggy is only 12. Yeah. Yeah. So he has an idea of what he wants to do in mm -hmm. the future. His ultimate goal right now is to work for Lego, as in the Lego headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. So we were thinking, oh, maybe he might need an engineering degree. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't think at this point he really understands what engineering is or mm -hmm. the different types of engineering or what he really wants to do exactly. Mm -hmm. But since we kind of have an idea of what he wants to do, then we're tailoring his education along that path. Mm -hmm. But we're also open to the idea that he might change his mind. He's only yeah. 12. Yeah. Yes. He's only yeah. in grade 7, right? Mm -hmm. He might discover one day that he wants to do something else mm -hmm. that's totally different. Yeah. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. But at least we've already kind of laid down this path. So if in case he wants to go to college, then he can. So how do you lay the foundations of flexibility? Because diba, um, sometimes when you're going to this direction and it's so hard to veer away from that when um, the child changes his mind. But mm -hmm. how do you provide that space? For him to be able to change his mind. Uh, we're always open to... We always make it a point to tell them to explore whatever they're interested in. Because right now, like, Ziggy is one-track-minded. This is what he wants. Mm -hmm. But every year, I always ask him, oh, what, some, what, what do you want to learn about this year? Mm -hmm. So he said, oh, this year I want to learn about Germany. I want to learn how to speak the German language. Yeah, yeah. So it's totally not related to like yeah. yeah, that's right. Right? So we just, um, we have this path, mm -hmm. kind of preparing him for this path. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we're allowing him to explore mm -hmm. other interests. Yeah, so if he decides yeah. to do something else, that's okay. Yeah. 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 Who said back? I said that it's it's supposed to be just one thing, right? Exactly. Yeah, I think it's just a a human imposed thing, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not really a thing. It's just something that humans came up with. You have to just be one thing, but it can be other things too. Exactly. Yeah. And even with my own experience, I graduated with a degree in communication arts yeah, and business yeah. management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Business was not really something I was interested in. Mm -hmm. But I only took that because during that time, I was being groomed mm -hmm. to take over my dad's business, mm -hmm. which is something I really didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. What I really wanted to do was media. Mm -hmm. So at least I found a way to merge both because in La Salle, they had a double yeah, degree yeah. course that combined both of them. So I at least I was able to do both. Mm -hmm. But even if I graduated with that degree, mm -hmm. I didn't end up in media after mm -hmm. college. I worked for a nonprofit. Yeah. yeah. Organizing um, events. Yeah. And marketing mm -hmm. campaigns. And then I started helping with the family business. It wasn't until years after 
when I decided to go freelance and work from home that I went back into my interest yeah. in media and started working as a freelance writer, mm-hmm. doing social media, and now podcast management. Yes, yes. So, podcast and I know, management. yeah, I know a lot of people whose work right now is mm-hmm. totally different yes. from their college course. Yes, yes. So what was that for? Mm-hmm. Right? I know a lot of my friends, actually, mm-hmm. who graduated with the same major mm-hmm. as me, who are like, working in DPO or insurance, which is totally not at all. Yeah. Maybe. So, about 20 years, I think. Yeah. Because I was just, a, I was a performer. And then mm-hmm. um, I became a full-time mom with no job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I really didn't uh, tap into the communications until much later when I decided mm, I want to write again. Yeah, but it wasn't a serious thing. So, um, I've been talking to some homeschoolers and some parents, and they they're convinced that a diploma or a college degree is still very, very much valued and very, very important. So, what do you say about that? I think it depends on the industry mm-hmm. or the career that you want, because here in the Philippines. So many companies are still traditional. Mm-hmm. So especially if you're a fresh grad, you have no mm-hmm. work experience yet. What are you going to put in your resume? Yeah. So the only thing they will see there is your college degree. Mm-hmm. So in that case, it might help get mm-hmm. you uh, yeah. accepted in a job. Mm-hmm. But as I said, it's a case-to-case basis. Yeah. Because in my experience, I've been working online for 11 years now. Mm-hmm. I've been working with mostly foreigners, US-based, yeah. Australia. And never once did they ask me for my college degree. It's true. Diba? What yeah. they care about is whether you can do the job or not. Mm. Or if so, you can speak English well. <laughs> exactly. They were the soft skills. Can you work with many different types of people? Can you communicate well? Are you willing to learn? Are you a fast learner? Yes, yes. So those are the more important yes. things to consider. I agree. I agree. I yeah. Mm-hmm. Also based on my experience, it's the same. I agree. Mm-hmm. But here in the Philippines, not so much yet. In fact, we even had a controversial issue a few weeks ago about the requirements for a salesperson for a potato company. A potato uh, yeah, company. <laughs> so What's next for, for your family? Well, we plan to continue homeschooling until yeah. the boys are uh, up until 12th grade. That's mm-hmm. the plan. As woo-hoo. for Zia, yeah, woo-hoo. God bless <laughs> us. <laughs> As for Zia, it's really her decision. We're just here to support her, whatever her plans may be. Because, like I said, she can learn whatever she wants to learn in whatever way she wants to learn them. Because if you also think about our experience, like right now, I'm into podcast management. Yeah. I didn't learn these skills in college. Yes. Podcasts weren't even in existence. Yes, yes, exactly. Right? Yes. So I did learn the basics of production, mm-hmm. media mm-hmm. production, and stuff like that. But the the actual skills that I'm yes. using now, I didn't learn it back then. We yes. never know what's gonna happen in the future. What skills yes. are needed in the future? Yes. So who's to say that it's college? It's the college experience. Mm-hmm. That is true. Yeah. And with the existence of the web, uh, the world is fast evolving. So mm-hmm. you'll never know what new software you need to learn, yeah. or what new systems you have to study. And yeah. you're not even limited to um, enrolling in local colleges anymore. Yeah. There are online, like in Coursera, there are yeah, so many yes. colleges involved there, right? So I even, yes, I even told yes. Mia, if you really want like a degree mm-hmm. or just a piece of paper to tell people, oh, you graduated from this 
why not graduate from a foreign yes, yes. university exactly. and but still do it here, right? Yes, so Bob was actually um considering that. I was studying that before because I was looking at oh okay if you if you learn uh, if you take up a certain number of required programs or courses mm -hmm. it adds up to a degree yeah but of course it takes a little while because I tried a couple of courses and it's it's not an overnight thing you really mm. have to study and you have to yeah. pass the test and the requirements. Mm -hmm. And in the traditional colleges here, there are so many other subjects you have to take that have nothing to do yes. with your major. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. I agree. Yes. Uh -uh. They, they require certain courses. Although I was required to take a few courses that were, well, I don't think they were totally irrelevant. They were irrelevant to me because I had no plans of using them at yeah. all. Were you required to take up education units in the salus i had some no. you had some yes really? i wow. yeah my, my course bachelor's mm -hmm. degree in communications i had education units i think it was 32 units of education and i had no plans to go and teach it was an extra load on me because the classes were also on a weekend and i don't sign up for weekend classes <laughs> i don't i was like my classes have to just be Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. But this one is only on Saturdays mm -hmm. and at 8 o'clock. Wow, in the, in the morning. <laughs> yeah, diba? So I had to travel. My La Salle is different from yours. Uh, Janice came from the La Salle University in Taft. I came from the La Salle University in Das Marinas. So imagine my commute exactly. from Las Pinas <laughs> to yeah. Cavite. Uh -huh. Be there by 8 o'clock. So... I was a favorite of my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any last thoughts or words of wisdom that you'd like to say to our listeners about their homeschooling? I think since our focus was on college or not college, I just want to say that college is not the one and only path to success and to a, to a successful and fulfilling career. Mm -hmm. It might be the easy way, because mm -hmm. it's all laid out for you. Just mm -hmm. need to enroll and take the classes. Mm -hmm. It might be the easiest way, but it's not the only way. So yeah. I would just like to advise parents that be open to mm -hmm. other alternatives, other op opportunities. And I'm not bashing college mm -hmm. at all. Yes. College can be useful for certain yes. careers. And I actually enjoyed my college Mm -hmm. experience but it's not for everyone so mm -hmm. at the end of the day it should be the choice of your child yeah because it's their life mm -hmm. and their success mm -hmm. is not dependent on their college degree mm -hmm. it's dependent on how dedicated they are to their career thank you so much janice do you have anything to promote you, you recently changed your ig handle yes. uh-huh it used to be Mommy Planerista because of my yeah. blog, but it's no my blog is no longer active. So mm -hmm. I changed it recently. You can find me on Instagram at Let Them Be Brave. Mm -hmm. And then I'm active there. I always share our homeschool adventures over there. Yeah. But I will also be at the yeah. upcoming event. Um you can homeschool 10th anniversary edition by the ladies of Ev Educating for Life. It's going to be on November 11 um, at the UP Bahay ng Alumni. So along with me and other homeschooling moms, I will be part of the panel and I will be the representative for unit studies. So if you want to learn more about homeschooling, um, I hope you guys join us there. Don't worry about the details, guys, because I'm going to put them all in the description for you to click on the link. So you'll find uh, the IG and you'll find also the link to, the, to register for the event, for the homeschool event. So if you're one of those moms who are trying to find alternatives to homeschooling or are still looking into homeschooling, would like to hear more or meet other homeschooling parents or if you've been homeschooling for a while and want to compare notes this is the place to go and you're going to meet janice lim there 
and me will be there um, along with other homeschooling families. So thank you so much, Janice, for thank agreeing to be interviewed by me. <laughs> Anytime. So, thank you for having me.